Arch modulus spring LWE is bigger or equal to module LWE and a meteo is going to be the top.
to inner products over vectors. Okay, so once again, we have the same error distribution, so we usually take the coefficients to be some sort of discrete Gaussian of width sigma. Um, and writing things out in matrix and vector notation, we end up with uh, the following. So we have the first component being n times d dimensional coefficient vector now, because remember we have um, d ring elements making up this a. And the second component is simply an n dimensional um, coefficient vector, where each entry or each coefficient is given by some noisy inner product. So in some sense, we have that one module LW sample is equivalent to n structured LW samples. Okay, so um, what are the popular rings in, that people use in practice? Well, we usually stick to power two cyclotomic rings, and one of the main reasons for this is that we can actually perform extremely fast ring multiplication by using uh, non-theoretic transform techniques. So when sort of restricting to this form of ring, the effective dimensions we can achieve are essentially, for ring LW at least, are essentially the powers of two. So typically, or a typical choice might be that we choose a ring dimension of 1024, but what happens if we want to increase security by increasing this ring dimension? Well, we have to jump all the way to 2048 in order to do this. So there's a huge jump in order to potentially uh, gain a small amount of security. Now, this might affect our scheme in terms of performance quite a lot. But this kind of drawback can be mitigated when using module LWE because you can basically fix a small uh, underlying ring um, of, say, dimension 256, and then set your module rank D to be whatever you want. So you can effectively go from 1000, dimension 1024 to 1024 plus 256 if you want to sort of increase your security. So the only kind of drawback of playing this trick is that um, multiplying module elements uh, kind of costs a little bit more than multiplying ring LW elements of, or ring elements of the same effective dimension. Okay, so here's a short summary of what we know about the efficiency and uh, lattice hardness of these um, LW variants. So the first row basically says uh, how many uh, integers modulo Q are required to represent sort of n noisy in products or n potentially structured LW samples. Uh, so as you can see, as we read from left to right, we go from the least efficient to the most efficient. But on the other hand, um, the second row basically says that LWE is at least as hard as uh, finding short vectors over general lattices, module LWE the same but for module lattices, and ring LWE the same but for ideal lattices. So the idea here is that as we go from left to right, we go from a general problem to a more structured problem, and therefore, potentially, our hardness guarantee is less, um, sort of less strong. Okay, so just before we get into the main induction of our paper, or the main result of our paper, it should be clear that um, you can reduce from ring LW to module LW. So you would do this by uh, starting off with some ring LW sample. Um, so everything in red is basically something you don't know, everything in blue is something you do. And the way you produce a module LWE sample is simply to sample a uniform A1 and an S1 from the appropriate secret distribution. And then all of a sudden, your bold A along with B plus A1, S1 is a valid module LWE sample for the, um, the bold <coughs> A and bold S uh, written on the slide. Okay, so it's clear that module LWE is at least as hard as ring LWE when we fix Q, which was the modulus, and the error rate alpha, where alpha is sigma over Q. So remember that sigma is the effective size of your error. Okay, so what happens when you allow yourself to change Q and alpha? Well, you can actually go the other way. So in the paper, we basically show that there's a reduction that goes from module LWE in rank D and modulus Q to ring LWE in modulus Q to the D. And the main uh, proof technique or the main analysis techniques are basically um, uh, inspired by the classical hardness of learning various paper. So if you know that work, you'll probably see a lot of parallels uh, drawn um, to this presentation. Okay, so just before we start with uh, introducing the overview of the reduction, what I've um, kind of already defined is what you would use, or the, I've basically defined the practical uh, definitions of bring the module of W. But now since we're kind of reducing between problems, we should really use the formal definitions. And 
basically what I have on this slide is basically one step closer to uh, the formal definitions of ring module and loop. So what changes really is that B, before, um, each coefficient was an integer modulo Q, but now we're going to consider it to be lying in the continuous interval between 0 and 1. So in order to do this, what all we need to do is we divide by Q and then make the error continuous. So the division by Q explains why there's a 1 over Q in front of the A times S. And then um, we also have to uh, note that E is now continuous Gaussian of width alpha, where alpha is sigma over Q. So the division by Q comes into this uh, width as well. Okay, so um, as an overview of what we want to achieve, well, in our reduction, well, we want to send uniform module elements to uniform ring elements. And we also want to uh, map our map between secrets to be somewhat reversible uh, if we want to form a search to search reduction. And the last thing we want is that uh, B tilde, where B tilde is sort of our um, final target ring LW instance, we want that B tilde is a valid noisy product of A tilde and S tilde. So we want this E tilde uh, on the bottom right hand side to be a continuous Gaussian of narrow width. Okay, so here's the sort of intuition for the case where D equals 3. So the idea is that we're going to set the lower bits of the coefficients of A tilde to be the bits of the first polynomial, the middle bits of the coefficients of A tilde to be the bits of the middle polynomial, and the upper bits to be the uh, coefficients, or the bits of the coefficients of the final polynomial. And the same sort of thing holds for X, but we do the, uh, do the same thing, but in the reverse direction. Okay, so concretely we have A tilde is A0 plus QA1 plus Q squared A2, and S tilde is S2 plus QS1 plus Q squared S0. And what we have when sort of doing this mapping is that uh, the normalized product of A tilde and S tilde is roughly equal to the normalized product of our original module elements when taken to lie in a continuous interval between 0 and 1, which more or less suggests that we can um, take B tilde as equal B. And this is uh, basically the error distribution that arises when doing this uh, sort of simplified uh, version of the reduction. So the right hand side um, is basically our error distribution, or gives, gives rise to our error distribution. And the good thing about the first term is that it's already continuous narrow Gaussian. So in essence, we're targeting a continuous narrow Gaussian. So the first term is basically exactly what we want. And this first term comes from the error from our original module LW sample. The second term is the sum, and the good thing about the sum is that it's small. So it's small because we're only considering indices where i is bigger than j. But the bad thing about this uh, sum is that it obviously doesn't con uh, constitute a continuous Gaussian because these aj and si's are basically discrete things. And the second thing is that the coefficients, if you were to expand this entire polynomial out, you, you would have that the coefficients aren't independent. But you can somewhat overcome this second issue by using the canonical embedding because of the way um, polynomial multiplication looks like in that space. Okay, so um, what are the technicalities in the full reduction? So what do we do in our paper? Well, the problem is that we end up with an unknown bad error distribution that depends on our secret S, this unknown secret. So we actually end up with some sort of discrete um, distribution over some lattice that depends on S. And then um, to solve this problem, we basically uh, form this, in essence, the same reduction, but in some randomized way. And then we end up having to drown out this uh, structure in our error distribution <coughs> in some way. So in order to do this, we basically apply some techniques from the GGH light paper. Um, and also, if you were to read our paper, you'd see that we do, in fact, consider canonical embeddings and dual rings as well as uh, basically considering Renyi divergence arguments throughout because um, we kind of know that this allows us to um, target an, an, a final error distribution that is a spherical Gaussian. So when all said and done, what we have is we an error rate <coughs> expansion of n squared times root d. But if you were to be satisfied with a, a small error distribution rather than exactly targeting a Gaussian error distribution, you would probably not bother drowning, and you would see a square root nd error rate expansion in practice. Okay, so here's a summary of the result. And it turns out that you can also play the same game but within a ring, so you can have a reduction that goes from ring LW to ring LW that halves the dimension but squares the modulus. Okay, so um, briefly, um, I'm going to sort of tell you what 
uh, cryptanalysis says about the hardness of ring LWE when you increase Q but fix it alpha. So um, the, a requirement for, say, the primal attack to work is that alpha must be less than or equal to Q to the minus n plus 1 over n plus n plus 1. So here, m is basically the number of samples available to you. Um, so if you have one ring LWE sample, you effectively have m noisy inner products available. So m, in this case, would be less than or equal to n. OK, so what happens when you replace q by q to the d? Well, you end up with this second inequality, which is basically harder to satisfy than the first. So for any kind of scenario where you have a maximum number of ring LWE samples available to you, um, you can basically keep increasing this d until the second uh, inequality is not satisfiable. So in some sense, it appears that ring LWE gets harder if we increase the modulus. Okay, so what does the standard uh, reduction from lattice problem say about uh, ring LWE? Well, it says as long as alpha q is bigger than something asymptotic in root log n, then ring LWE is at least as hard as finding short vectors over ideal masses. To approximation factor gamma. So we're not looking for the shortest vector, we're looking for things of <coughs> length gamma times the shortest vector. So the interesting thing is this gamma is independent of uh, Q, so if we replace Q by Q to the D, we get the same hardness guarantee. So to summarize the different perspectives, um, we have that for cryptanalysis, it seems like make, increasing Q makes things harder, but increasing Q doesn't really change things from the perspective of the theorem from a previous slide. Okay, so if you try and build in the hardness landscape around our reduction, uh, this is essentially what you would get. So you get the top row, um, the top like double-ended arrow is basically an equivalence between ring LWE and module, module LWE in a rank 1. The arrows going from right to left are a result of the trivial or straightforward reduction that goes from ring LWE to module LWE in any rank. And finally, the arrows going from left to right are a result uh, are a result of the main reduction of our paper, so the one that goes from module LWE to ring LWE. So if you read down the right hand side, you do get that the hardness of ring LWE appears to increase as we increase the modulus. Okay, so just to conclude the talk, the uh, corollary of our work is that we've shown that certain ring LWE instances are at least as hard as solving the module SIDP problem. And this kind of conclusion is um, basically utilizes the hardness guarantee given in the original module LWE paper. So also this result augments the result that says uh, ring LWE is at least as finding short vectors over ideal masses. Uh, the only thing to like, keep note of is that when we perform our reduction from module LWE to ring LWE, we're actually reducing to a ring LWE problem that appears to be slightly harder than the ones used in the literature. So in particular, they require a larger module lattice rank in order to be able to solve. Nonetheless, we've basically shown that for any module LWE problem, you can define a ring LWE problem that's at least as hard to uh, solve as your original module LWE problem. And we've shown explicitly what the uh, relationship between the parameters should be. Okay, so that's all I have to say, and thanks for listening.